what I'd like to take you through now, uh, everyone, is half a dozen slides giving you a snapshot on Dusk, recent past, current trading, and where we are growth pillars are. So on the top left of our business snapshot page, you'll see going back to F17, some consistent uh, ongoing sales growth from F17 through to F20. And to provide as, as current as possible for the prospectus, we did an LTM uh, forecast there to the end of September, which to $109.9 million. And across the top, you'll see our, our comp store growth. Uh, so we've been posting consistent comp store growth now for 40 plus months, coming into our 14th consecutive quarter of sales and gross margin dollar uh, increases, same stores, not counting the new net stores that we add to our network. So what is it that we sell? Yep, we started off as a candle company and we will remain uh, to be the market leader in that segment. But as you can see on the chart on the top right, Two thirds of our sales come from outside of that candle, that candle business, and that's a deliberate strategy of mine to diversify the product offering to our customers. The simple fact of the matter is, though, we're a fragrance business. We're a home fragrance and personal space fragrance business. Whether that's delivered by candle or a reed diffuser, or our more tech ultrasonic diffusers, which is the fastest growing segment that we have uh, in our business. On the bottom left, you'll see our growing store network, steady, consistent growth, improving retail margins and lower rents as we negotiate harder. And the swing in momentum, the, the swing in strength in those negotiations swings from landlord to retailer. I can say that we are now trading as per our prospectus and management update, trading update. We've now got 118 stores operating for peak Christmas trade. And on the right hand, bottom right, one of the pillars of our success has been a rewards program. So we now, at the time of this slide, we were at 525. We're now approaching 560,000 paid up members. Each member will pay us $10. And in that period, they'll receive a suite of benefits. And we get a rich source of customer and transaction data to leverage. Next slide, please. So the investment highlights, category leader in a growing market. We are leveraging the current trail, tailwinds to deliver some strong sales and earnings growth. And I'll touch on the trading update that we issued on, the, on our first day on the market on the second. We're the only vertical retail play, and we'll talk about margins in a moment. So our relationship goes from factory floor to shop floor, it provides us with agility, makes us nimble to respond to customer trends, and it under, underpins and underlines our very high margin as we should have uh, as a specialty retailer. We only have dust products. Unusually for a retailer, we don't buy product. We develop all of our product ourselves. We have a team of eight product developers, two graphic designers in-house to provide us with 100% fully differentiated product. We don't price compete. So where the customer falls in love with our fragrance, the only place they can buy that fragrance in a candle or a diffuser, ultrasonic diffuser, is at a Dusk store. I've mentioned before about our Dusk Rewards program, half a million plus 560,000 and growing Dusk Rewards members. Since we reopened post lockdown in May, our sign up rate for Dusk Rewards is 35% higher than it was for the previous corresponding period. That's some of the cheapest customer acquisition I've been involved in in my career. And the retention of those customers is being shown now as we trade through into Christmas. Omni-channel, uh, store network growing, as you mentioned before, and our fastest growing channel is online, which continues to take share as we invest in skill set and platform. And as I mentioned before, a track record in growth and profitability. The only stat not on that page is, the comp, is our comp store performance of 43 consecutive months of comp store sales growth. Yes, we've got tailwinds at the moment, but this is a this is a business that's been growing steadily. Sales and earnings now coming into its fifth, coming into the end of its fourth year and into its fifth year of steady growth. Thanks. Talked about results before. Here's our pro forma EBIT, excluding JobKeeper. So our growth in EBIT has been consistent with our sales growth, our store network expansion, and our online channel growing. 
So we've seen some strong tailwinds, yes. But again, our LTM, our FY20 number was 13. Our LTM net of any JobKeeper benefit, 17.8. Our compound annual growth rate from our store network is there on the right. And importantly, I think, and let me refer back to the fact that Dusk is a vertical model, the only vertical model in the category. Despite the Australian dollar depreciating, our margins have hugged those mid 60s in that period. We've, we've negotiated hard on lower COGS. As our volumes have increased, we've gone to our supplier partners, had lower COGS to offset currency, and we've had price increases where we've offered new to the company, new to the market, highly differentiated product. On to the right, our average transaction value growing 38 to 40 to 45. And I can report that in October, as per the trading update, we had further increases in our transaction value as our customers shift in, new customers shift into the category and purchase up for the first time. Please. Who is our competitive set? Well, our customer is, a, is a typically female, 25 to 49, suburban. Uh, Dusk has no stores in any CBD location. We've not been impacted by the close down in those uh, major commercial centres at all. We operate in suburban malls and our competitive set, department stores first and foremost. It's not a bad time to have department stores as a direct competitor. And as you move further along to the right, the amount of floor space and, uh, and focus given to our category, home fragrance and fragrance for your personal space, drops off dramatically. We see us winning on service, on product specialty and our brand. We measure the brand effectiveness as the promise that the brand makes and the performance that the brand provides for our customer. We make a promise that we are affordable everyday luxury. We must be performing because our comp sales have been growing for four years and our new stores are performing above their pro forma. So that's the competitive set we operate in. Traditional retail, wholesale to retail, old model, whereas Dusk is vertical with a growing online channel. Thanks. Our store operating metrics. We've got here our CAGAR rate for sales 17 to 20. We've got our new store, our net store openings there on the right. And those closures have typically been pop-up stores where we've gone into the centre in a temporary state waiting for our full store to open. On the bottom left, you'll see our store contribution averaging in there at about $320,000 per store. Dusk has no uh, net loss stores. We have no negative contribution stores. All stores in our network are profitable. Critically, in terms of working capital usage and the cash generation of the business, we're looking at a payback of under 12 months for our new stores. We're doing that by negotiating hard on rent because we've got high margins, we've got growing average transaction value, and more and more our centres are contributing to the fit out of the business, which is driving, driving down the amount of cash we need to commit to open stores and lifting the return as we continue to trade strongly above pro forma and when those stores become comp stores. Our online business, we're getting towards the end now with an eye on the clock and being respectful of the time. Uh, it's our fastest growing channel. We can see our online sales there in the top right, uh, again, growing sharply. Our online penetration of sales at 9% at the time of writing. I can say that as per the trading update, we provided October was 11% of sales. So we're seeing a continued, steady, profitable climb in online. And at the same time, growing our comp store sales in our physical store network. Again, a lot of concern in retail has been if you're growing online, are you penalizing bricks and mortar sales? That's simply not the case for us and hasn't been the case uh, in the last 43 months. When a brand is strong, you don't need to invest as much. So 73% of the traffic that comes to our site is unpaid. So as we see comp store growth, strong margin performance despite a depreciated currency, which will provide a tailwind now as it reverses up. A pipeline of stores we see another 25 to 30 stores that we sites that we've identified uh, in Australia for us to target uh, in the very near future. 
Well, I think that's close to my to my 10 minutes and I might pause now for uh, Tim for any questions. Yeah, thanks, Peter. We've got a few questions and, and, and thanks for getting straight to the numbers. Um, the, the, the plan to list, what, why the reason to, to list uh, just recently? Well, we, we were in the market to ready to go uh, earlier this year when everything changed in, in Feb, March, Tim. Uh, so what we've, what we've really done in September, October is finish what we started in, in Feb and March. And back then, you know, we were talking about 30 to 32 months of 34 months of comp store sales growth. Now we're talking about an, another eight or nine on top to make the story better. It, it was simply a case of being interrupted by COVID. And, and what sort of boost did you get by COVID? I, I, I would understand increased sales. There's probably job keeper. There's probably rent reductions. How, how does it look moving forward out of that environment, um, given your, you know, your, your growth? Oh. Look, look uh, April was when the stores closed was certainly not a net benefit. Uh, but from then, when we we, re we closed late and we reopened early in May, I think we were open amongst the first to reopen. Uh, so yeah, we've been we've been trading strongly, and as per the you know we can see the lift that we've got. So EBIT EBIT was growing strongly pre-COVID. It's just grown very strongly uh, post, and you know up to October in the trading update where we you know we were 44. 44% comp growth in October. Uh, so again, that's a, that's a strong result in retail land. Sure, and, and coming into Christmas, of course, there's a, there's a question here, you've got this kind of vertical approach online and stores. Is there, is there a target number in terms of stores uh, within Australia and, and what are the overseas plans? So we've got a target of up to 150 sites uh, in Australia. We're ahead of schedule at the moment at 118 coming into, into Christmas. Uh, we've identified sites in New Zealand. I was in Auckland, uh, are ready to sign deals in uh, Feb of this year before everything's changed. We'll be back over there and we're targeting to be back in the New Zealand market, in the New Zealand market for Christmas 21. So 12 stores in New Zealand target 140 to 150 here in Australia. And offshore, we'll probably use a beachhead for online first and foremost, but that's kind of an horizon too. We've got plenty of runway for comp, new stores here and, and entering New Zealand. And, and you spoke a little bit, bit about this subscription model. Um, is there plans to expand on that? I can understand the, the rich sort of data. What, what are the plans for that? Well, we've got a new online platform. We've got the, the uh, shiny out of the box Magento platform to uh, launch in March of next year. That will allow us to do a subscription model to our loyalty members. Our loyalty members are about 60% of our sales. They spend about 30% more than non-members. So every time we sign someone up, they pay us $10 for the privilege of being a customer and getting those benefits for the next two years because the cycle of the life cycle of the program, each member is $10 renewal every two years. So that's a, a, an intent of future purchase. So there's a gross margin benefit for sign up this, we become part of the repertoire that they use for personal home fragrance and for gifting Mother's Day uh, and Christmas and that rich stream of data that we get from them we're now utilising to some, honestly, not great effect, but to some effect. And I've added headcount and expertise in the last two or three months to leverage that as we move out of this, into the second half of the financial year with the new platform. And, and I suppose that subscription model ultimately reduces your cost of acquisition. What, what is that cost of acquisition? We, 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 our cost of acquisition at the moment, if, if you, it's simply the rental and cost of the stores divided by the members that we sign up and the online, online signs up more, more members than of course any other, any of our stores, but our, our cost of acquisition is actually a sunk cost into the running of the business. It's a KPI to sign up a member every five or every five transactions in a store and our store managers are bonused uh, on that KPI. So in effect, it's a self-funding customer acquisition and the, the growth that we've had since we've reopened has allowed us to hit that 550, then blow past 560,000 members way ahead of where we thought we would have. Sure, I mean, that, that's a big number, but you know, there's, is there a, an online advertising model to acquire new customers? Yeah, there will be. We will be after after Christmas. Our, our our focus at the moment we is all about execution for November and December to, to absolutely hit this out of the park uh, for November uh, and December, and then we'll look at executing with our new platform. That the timing's all coinciding with having uh, the 
the integration between loyalty online uh, and online acquisition, as you mentioned before, Tim. That's the focus for Q3, Q4.